Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel called Zona Reacts where I learn all things Bharat with your help and I just share my Slovak Central European point of view and today's video um, it's an interesting one uh, we're going to look into how is actually you know your favorite neighbor China um, finding techniques, which I thought it was very peculiar. So I just wanted to explore the topic. Uh, but before we jump into today's video, please like this video and click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification. Thank you so much for your support. So as you can see, this is a Chadva video. Um, quite curious. However, what I want to emphasize because I think people coming to my channel have a different maybe expectations of this channel and I want to really manage that and uh, this is not a political channel this is me as a single person of Slovakia which is in Central Europe um, exploring what things all things India literally that is what it is so if you are expecting some sort of educated narratives from me about India or China relations. This is not the channel. The channel is literally about me learning things about India and reacting as I go um, and learning most prominently with your support. So I just wanted to say it out loud. I think um, I will continue saying that on certain videos because I feel like people are misunderstanding what this channel's purpose is about and Let's get into it. I often get this question. Why is it that when Indian and Chinese soldiers fight and or clash along their border, the line of actual control, they use primitive weapons. They use fists and sticks and stones and clubs. Why don't they use modern weaponry? It's a good question. Please subscribe and let me tell you exactly why this is the case. So India and China have this almost three and a half thousand kilometer long undemarcated border which is called the line of actual control it's the india tibet border and the chinese have steadfastly and consistently refused to make any progress towards demarcating the border so they want this border issue to remain open this border dispute to remain open so as to keep india under pressure and it makes sense for them to do that because there is a significant power asymmetry between india and china take a look at this table the top 10 nations in terms of hard power and you will see that China is more than three times more powerful than India. Its hard power score is more than three times that of India. So there is a power asymmetry and it makes sense for them, them to press home the advantage in the claim Indian territory. They've already grabbed some Indian, ter Indian territory in 1962. They have tried to salami slice little slivers of territory from 1962 until the 2010s, but they claim massive Indian territories. More, more, they want more. You know, India obviously will not give those territories away. And that's the entire source of the hostility and tensions with the, between the two nations. In 2020, there was a deadly clash in which 20 soldiers died on the Indian side. And the Chinese claim four Chinese soldiers died. But it's most likely that more than 40 of those Chinese soldiers died. So the two sides, whenever they clash, they use primitive weapons. And the reason for that is this agreement between India and China. So this is the agreement between the government of the Republic of India and the government of the People's Republic of China on confidence building measures in the military field along the line of actual control in the India-China border areas. So that's a long drawn out name. And this agreement has 12 articles. Let's quickly take a look at what those articles are. And then let's zone in. Let's focus on the one that matters. So, Article 1 is about neither side shall use its military capability against the other side. Article 2 is about a fair, reasonable and mutually acceptable settlement of the boundary question. Yeah, nice lip service. Article 3 is about various measures to limit the military forces and so on. You can take a look. You can pause the video if you would like to read this. There's Article 4 about uh, maintaining peace and tranquility. And there's Article 5 about preventing air intrusions. Then there's Article 6, which we will focus on. There's Article 7 about other things. There's Article 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So you can pause the video if you would like to read. But let's go back to Article 6, which is what we want to talk about. So 
Article 6 says, with a view to preventing dangerous military activities along the line of actual control in the India-China border areas, the two sides agree as follows. Firstly, neither side shall open fire, cause biodegradation, use hazardous chemicals, conduct blast operations or hunt with guns or explosives within two kilometers from the line of actual control. This prohibition shall not apply to routine firing activities in small arms firing ranges. If there's a need to conduct blast operations within two kilometers of the line of actual control as part of developmental activities, the other side shall be informed through diplomatic channels or by convening a border personnel meeting, preferably five days in advance. Third, while conducting exercises with live ammunition in areas close to the line of actual control, precaution shall be taken to ensure that a bullet or missile does not accidentally fall on the other side across the line of actual control and causes harm to the personnel or property of the other side. And you can read the fourth clause as well, which is part of Article 6. So this is the reason why the two sides do not exchange fire. They do not use firearms, they do not use explosives, they do not use missiles, artil artillery or any of that. They simply resort to tactics that are rather primitive and medieval in nature. Now, the last time there was firing between the two sides in the 20th century was in 1975 when the Chinese ambushed four Indian soldiers and shot them dead. Mm -hmm. Then this agreement was signed in 1996, the one that we are looking at right now. And in the year 2020, a few months after the Galwan clash, there was a reported exchange of fire from between both sides. So the Chinese and the Indians both accused the other side of opening fire. So that's something that happened in the year 2020. And since then, this agreement has once again kind of held steady. Now, the Chinese have paid a lot of lip service to various parts of the agreement. They have tried to salami slice their way into Indian territory. They have tried some at times to intrude into the airspace across the line of actual control and so on and so forth. And they have definitely not had any interest in demarcating the border, you know, resolving the border issue. They want to keep it open. But this non-firing and not using explosives, that article has kind of held firm with one little hiccup in the year 2020, maybe more than a little hiccup. So that's the reason why the two sides do not open fire. They do not use modern weapons. They use primitive basic weapons. And it makes a lot of sense. It's probably the one reasonable thing the Chinese have done. Because when you look at their other activities and other actions, those are very unreasonable. Essentially, claiming territories that don't belong to them. They have territorial disputes with all their neighbors. They, they claim the entirety of the South China Sea, the 9-10, 10 dash line. They claim a giant Indian territory called Arunachal Pradesh and, and much more. They simply won't stop. They have this insatiable appetite for more territory. They're an expansionist nation. They're a hegemonic nation. They're a nation that seeks to replicate the activities and the actions of the U.S. in the 18th and 19th centuries, the way the U.S. expanded. Look up history. So the Chinese seek to replicate that. But India obviously won't allow this to happen. And in India is a nuclear armed nation. So is China. And if the two sides were to exchange fire, and there were casualties on either side, then there will be the immediate temptation to escalate, bring in reinforcements, use heavier weapons, maybe use heavier machine guns, then, then maybe use artillery. And if that doesn't work, launch a few missiles, then call in a few airstrikes. And then when you, before you know it, you're very close to a very dangerous threshold. So that's the reason why, so as to not escalate the matter, that's why the two sides use primitive weapons. And once the whatever clash happens, the two sides meet, have a flag meeting, and they try to cool the temperatures down a little bit. And that's more or less worked thus far. But the root cause of the issue, legitimate Chinese occupation of Tibet, and also the secondary root cause is that they, ha they have so far consistently refused to take any steps that would lead to the demarcation of the India-Tibet border. So th th these are the two issues. Right now, there's a significant asymmetry in power between India and China. The India-Tibet border is one of the most dangerous flashpoints in the world. Nowhere else will you see two nuclear-armed nations have such a long 
border and that to a disputed border. And there's if you bring Pakistan also into the mix, the India Tibet Pakistan tri junction, that's an even more dangerous spot because then you have two hostile nations arrayed up against India. The only other place where you have two major nuclear armed nations is either the English Channel between England and France, between the UK and France. Those two are not really hostile nations. They had a thousand years of enmity, the UK. England and France, but today they are both part of NATO, so they are kind of yeah, well under control. And then you have the Russia-China border, which also has a small border dispute. The Chinese have reopened that, but the Russian nuclear strength is such that the Chinese um, nuclear uh, deterrent pales into insignificance compared to that. So you have that. But when it comes to India and China, that is probably one of the most dangerous nuclear flashpoints in the world. And it is really good that the two nations have this agreement, which makes sure, which ensures that whatever fights happen between, whatever clashes happen between the two armed forces, those are, well, they can't escalate because they use primitive weaponry. Makes a lot of sense, despite the arsenals both nations have at their disposal. So that, in short, is the reason why, despite being technologically advanced military powers, despite having nuclear weapons, both sides use primitive weaponry so that there is no escalation, because escalation could lead to disaster. Thank you for watching. So I believe this is it. Now, that was perhaps not what I expected uh, that this is going to be about, but it's interesting that there is actually an agreement uh, between the two nations in place about about that. I'm like, in my head, is the, he mentioned the 2020 clash, which I don't know what that one was about. So if you could let me know, that would be super, super great. Um, but for me, as, as where I stand in Europe, is that in the modern day, history is unheard of that someone would just go, you know, after World War II, um, attacking other person's territory but that's kind of like the setup that we have here because it was you know um the kind of you you're protected with the eu with the nato and all of that so you're inherently part of one nation if you like uh even though it's a bit far-fetched but one alliance that doesn't allow you to attack another country and i guess wow so is, is it still like I, I know that you guys are mentioning it, but in my head, it's just so incomprehensible. Like, why would a country continue, you know, even though there are like, there is like a global law and all that kind of stuff, why would one country keep on continue, you know, tackling the borders? Like, it, it, it just blows my mind. And quite frankly, I never really understood what happened with Tibet. And what that that is about. So if you could let me know in a kind of uh, the, the the key points there, that would be super helpful. Or where to you know look for good information, that would be much appreciated. But uh, um, you know, like why would you? Even, in my head, it's like why would you even fight at the borders? Like what are the, those clashes? Like what is happening? Um, and you know uh, i see your comments and you're always smile like how china has all the disputes with all the neighbors and all that kind of stuff but it just blows my mind that it, it always blows my mind because it feels like you guys live in a completely different world than the world that i live in and i don't think i can even fully grasp what's happening out there like people find like at the borders no one because here right like i we we have border security we have schengen system and all of that you don't have anyone at the borders you you cross slovakia to austria there is nothing right there is like the, the the free movement but your situation is just very very different and it's even hard for me to picture what adlets is is like you know is are these kind of clashes like quite frequent are they being reported in the media i'm just i'd love to know um if you could share with me in the comments below and i think with that being said thank you so much for watching this video with me if you did enjoy it, please give a thumbs up share like and subscribe to this channel and i'll see you next one until then please do take care i am sending a lot of peace and love bye, -bye.